Welcome to Worship at Living Lord. We are so glad that you have joined us for this worship video. Please like, share, and subscribe so that we can share this good news with more people. Today we're going to talk about going on a journey. In particular, what do you do when your boat is rocking? And we're doing this from our scripture lesson in which Jesus' disciples are going on a journey. And in particular, I have to say that I will be going on a journey too. Within a month, I will be moving 200 miles north of here to St. Mark's Lutheran Church in Washington, Illinois. And you are going on a journey in a figurative sense as well. On Sunday evening, you will meet the senior pastor candidate, and next week on Sunday, you will be voting on that candidate. So you are on a journey, I am on a journey, and we are all on a journey together, and that's what Christians do. So Jesus and his disciples were also on a journey. We hear this story from the gospel about them on a boat. And the interesting thing is that in the early church, the church itself was often portrayed as a ship, like Noah's Ark, safely carrying God's people through the flood. And in some ways, the church is still like a ship. We are passengers on God's ship, on God's journey. This is even reflected in our architecture. The room that I'm standing in is often called a sanctuary or a worship center, but it has another ancient name. It's sometimes called a nave because it looks like an upside down ship. The peak of the roof reminds us of the bottom keel on the hull of a ship. And that is where we get the word navy. It comes from the same root as the word nave. So every time I enter this room, I imagine that I'm getting on a boat like the early disciples. And so I'm also comforted by the fact that when Jesus takes you on a journey, he will be with you till the very end. Because there will be time when the boat is rocking. There will be storms and wind and rain and waves. The disciples were sailing across the Sea of Galilee in the story, and the storms came up and they were afraid. Now Peter tries to be brave. He tries to show his faith. He walks toward Jesus until his fears overwhelm him and he sinks. Have you ever felt that way? When storms rise, waves batter your boat, are you afraid? Do you feel like you might be sinking? I do, and I would not pretend otherwise. This reminds me of the heavy rain that we had in this region last week, in particular last Friday, when I was visiting Herman, Missouri. And the water was rising and even came up over the bridge, and so I had to take an alternate route. I'm not unfamiliar with storms. Thirteen years ago, there was a flood in my home region of Wisconsin and Minnesota, and the town Rushford, Minnesota was flooded, and many others were as well. And as I've shared with you, in my own home, we had 17 and a half inches of rain, and we were flooded as well. And so sometimes we joke that we needed an ark to save us. There are times during this past year when it may have felt to you like we were in a storm. There are times when you may have wondered if the waves of the pandemic would swamp us. There are three people here at Living Lord that I work with most closely. The President, Jen LeClaire, the Vice President, Deborah schrader Sonnier, and my ministry associate, Louis Molman. And if you were to ask any of them, a year and a half ago, could you have imagined the journey that we would have been on? You might have felt like this picture of a girl that is drinking straight from a fire hose. The people here might not have anticipated that both pastors would have left. Or Lewis, in a sermon a couple weeks ago, talked about the fact that 
If he had been told that in a year and a half, he would be married, living in the Midwest, expecting a baby in a pandemic, he would have never believed it, but he would not have had it any other way. It might have felt like going down the roller coaster as in this picture, and we see that the Holy Spirit is with us at every moment, but it still can be frightening. And so when your boat is rocking, remember that when Jesus takes you on a journey, he will be with you to the very end. You see, that's the point. We have a destination. We are going somewhere, and not just to heaven when we die. We are not drifting aimlessly in this world. We have a destination, a purpose, and a goal. In a way, we are on a mission trip. That's what the disciples were. They had been on one side of the Sea of Galilee, and they saw Jesus feed 5,000 people, as we heard in our lesson last week. And now they are on the boat on the Sea of Galilee, and they are going to the other side. And reading ahead, we see that as soon as Jesus landed, all of the sick and the ill people were clamoring toward him, swarming around him, seeking his healing touch. People on both sides of the Sea of Galilee needed what Christ had to give. And today on all sides around us, there are people who need what we have to offer. This reminds us we are never alone. We have each other, we are part of something bigger um, and a purpose that is much bigger than ourselves. So never give up. We are on a mission. We have a destination, a goal, a purpose. Our mission comes from the very heart of God for a broken world. And as at the time of the disciples, people still need God's love. People still need to be fed spiritually and physically. People still need healing. A few months ago, I asked a question that was kind of a trick question. It was a fill in the blank. And I asked you to complete this sentence. God's church has a mission would be one good answer to fill in that blank. But if we turn that phrase around, we will see a profound truth and we will see what our purpose is. If we say God's mission has a church, then we will concede that the mission moves forward and we are part of God's mission forever. Our mission is to keep moving forward. Our sails need to be full of the wind of the Holy Spirit. We're not just drifting aimlessly. People on the other shore need what we have to offer and what we are blessed to share, the love of Christ. Now, this does not depend on any human individual. It does not depend on me. It does not just depend on pastors, whether past pastors or future pastors. It depends on Christ who put us into the boat and then stepped on as we go across the water of life and will stay with us as we travel to the other side to the very end. This past year, we have been studying Paul's letter to the Philippians. And in a recent staff devotional time, we discovered that several of us have a favorite verse from that book. And it is this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So each time the waves hit you, realize that together, with the help of God, we can grow stronger and more resilient. Instead of drowning, the winds can cause us to go faster. With Christ as our captain, we can say, it's full speed ahead. With Christ as our captain, it's full speed ahead. So we gather together, we recharge, and then we move forward in mission. We trust that Christ who put the boat into the water will stay with us as we travel to the other side. 
when Christ takes us on a journey, he will be with us to the very end. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. So we thank you for the wine and for the bread. For we see the life you gave and the blood you shed. And we remember your wondrous love. Thank you for joining us for worship here at Living Lord. Do join us again and check out our website if you would like to learn more about this congregation and our many ministries. And now please hear this blessing for your coming week. May Christ travel with you on your journeys of life, guide you, guard you, and help you to arrive safely to the other side. And we know that this will happen in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is good.